Hello, everybody. My name is Professor Rich. So, and today we're going to talk about the military. This was a request. So get in line, boy. Let's move out. Now, some general terms to set us up for our discussion about uh, marching instructions. We've got terms like information and in position. So information means that you as an individual are now in a formation with the other individuals in your group which could be a, a squad or a battalion. I mean, it depends on the size of the group. You have different words like this. Squad being smaller, battalion being larger. Uh, in position is normally referring to an individual being in position, um, either in position in formation or in position as in they have gone to a position they're supposed to go to and they're there it could also mean that the whole squad is in position and ready and then we have the term break ranks so when you break ranks that means that you're leaving formation if you break ranks the ranks are like the rows of the formation all right so let's move on to the marching instructions so marching instructions right we have Attention! Right? Which means pay attention, as you might expect. You also need to stand in a specific way. This varies depending on the nation, uh, but normally it involves standing up straight and sort of not doing anything, uh, not moving or fidgeting or whatever. And pay attention. Then we have at ease, right? At ease. So, uh, at ease or at ease means that you no longer need to stand up straight. You can stand in a comfortable way. However, you shouldn't move from your position. So at ease means you can relax, but don't move from your position. You should stay more or less where you're standing. Then we have fallout. Fallout. Uh, that means you can actually break rank. It means you no longer need to hold your position in the formation. So that's fallout. Uh, however, you should remain in the general area. Fallout is not uh, necessarily a command uh, telling you that you can go wherever you want. Now, you'll notice I talk a lot on this channel about unnatural English and frozen English and how English teachers need to speak in a natural way as much as possible, especially when demonstrating pronunciation. However, when it comes to military instructions and commands, frozen English actually tends to be the correct way to issue commands because frozen English is very clear, very loud and very succinct right? It's like you pronounce every word strong, right? And that is almost a military way of speaking. And then we've got some movement style commands. So we have forward march, uh, which means walk forward, basically, but walk in that special way that people in the army walk, a left foot, right foot. Uh, and it, again, varies by country, but march is the way that they walk in the army, and forward march is the command to whoosh, go forward. Forward march! Okay, and then we've got on the double. So on the double, or double time, means uh, you do what you're doing, which often would be marching forward, uh, but you do it two times speed. So that's our on the double or double time. And then we have about face. So about face means that you turn 180 degrees to face the other way. So that's about face. All right. So there we have our marching, sort of our marching commands. Then let's move on to some more general commands. OK, we have commands like take point. Now, point Take point means you move to the vulnerable position. So take point as an order to a squad could mean that you, you want that squad to move out and 
take the sort of central position or occupy the central area, okay? If you say, take point to an individual, then it's probably telling that individual to go to the front, right? Or as if you're in a squad and you're ordering an individual, a team of specialists, then maybe if you tell someone to take point, you're like, you know, go out there and move to the next vulnerable position, right? Vulnerable position that might be, uh, might put you in a place where you could be under fire, right? So under fire is actually a piece of information that someone might say to their commanding officer or to other members, under fire! Uh, that means that you're receiving gunfire, gunshots or some sort of some sort of shots they could be can they could be cannons do people, do people use cannons tanks or whatever any kind of shots basically under fire you're receiving some sort of uh, enemy fire okay back to commands so we have fire at will so fire at will means you've got your gun you've probably been aiming right and now when you hear fire at will that means you fire when you want, okay? You you don't need to wait for the ready, aim, fire, no. Fire at will means you go, fire that gun, all right? Then we've got hold fire, okay? Hold your fire, right? So hold fire means stop firing, okay? Stop firing at will, stop firing at all, in fact. Hold fire means stop firing, okay? Fall back. So fall back also means the same as retreat. So fall back and retreat. That means do the opposite to take point. Basically, it means you've got to get out of there, right? Um, it means uh, we're not going to win this one, guys. Let's move back somewhere safer. All right. Fantastic. So, uh, what kind of responses might someone receive if they're radioing those in? Hold your fire! Right, okay. Fall back! Right, these kind of things. Then the responses will be things like, Roger that. Right, or copy. Right, uh, received. Right, these kinds of little uh, radio chatter responses. Roger that. Okay, a uh, very common one. Uh, Roger that. Uh, and then we might have ways that the squad can provide information. So before we talked about under fire, right? You could also hear taking fire, right? Okay, uh, this gives the commanding officer the information that uh, this squad or individual is under attack. Um, we also might say falling back, which means they've been forced to retreat. They're forced to fall back. And that's important to give that information to somebody. Somebody needs to know it, right? And then we also have this call out that might be something like hostiles or enemy, right? Normally just a one word. Uh, it can vary a lot. Often armies, uh, individual armies have nicknames for the enemy they're fighting and they'll say that one word and that means I've seen or I've identified an enemy. So now we're in combat. Okay, great. So that's my sort of breakdown of some commands and information in the army. Um, I'm just going to go through army ranks now. Army ranks in the British army. Colonel Jack O'Neill, Major Samantha Carter, Dr. Daniel Jackson, allow me to introduce to you Lieutenant General Vedrine. Colonel. General. Major. General. Doctor. General. I would like to say at this point, uh, if you're kind of enjoying this and you'd like to know more military vocabulary and have that explained, then do post a comment down below the video and let me know specifically what you'd like to hear about, because there's all kinds of things we could talk about. We could talk about different tanks. We could talk about the different boat. There's lots of things we could talk about. Comment down below, please let me know. All right, so back to this army ranks. So let's go quickly through the army ranks in the British Army. So we start off, the lowest uh, rank is uh, private, that's when you first start out, and it goes to, from private, Lance Corporal, Corporal Sergeant, notice the pronunciation there, Sergeant, not Sergeant, but Sergeant. A lot of these words actually originally came from French roots, Latin roots, which is why they have very peculiar 
spelling for the pronunciation uh, compared to other English words. So we have sergeant, right? And then you might be something like a sergeant at arms, some kind of special sergeant. So these are what we call the other ranks. These are not the uh, officers technically. These are the other ranks, the kind of lower ranks. Some people might call them the grunts. Uh, grunts is a slang term, which basically means uh, a non-officer member of the army. All right, so they're the grunts, private, lance corporal, corporal, sergeant, and a special sergeant, which might be a sergeant at arms or a, a staff sergeant. So then moving on, we go into the officers. So we start off with the officer cadet. Uh, the officer cadet probably being some um, annoying teenager who's just come out of university and thinks that they're an officer. Then we move into... Get ready for this. Then we move into lieutenant. That's right. Lieutenant. Yes, you might look at that and say, that's a bit weird. That word looks like it says lieutenant, and I've heard the word lieutenant. Yes, uh, that's, that may well be true in the American army. However, in the British army, we use a special pronunciation. We spell the word the same, uh, but we say lieutenant. Again, this is from French originally, apparently, and that's where that um, root comes from. But there you go. So it's lieutenant, lieutenant. Lieutenant, Lieutenant. Uh, then we've got Captain, Major. So uh, to give you an idea of these things, Lieutenant and Second Lieutenant um, tends to be the kind of desk officer that's above a sergeant. So the sergeant is down there with the grunts in the trenches, okay, which in the trenches is a reference to World War One, where soldiers would dig a hole in the ground and sit in this horrible hole and be firing guns while the lieutenants would be back in their camp drinking a cup of tea with the with the captain or whatever, right? Um, so yes, lieutenant just above that. Then you've got your captain. So captain, very respectable rank. A uh, captain would often be commanding. Uh, a squad or several squads um, and then you, you're moving up to a major after captain so uh, major and then after major you've got listen to this one lieutenant colonel okay uh, lieutenant colonel okay and then colonel so yes again we have a word there that looks like it should be colonel but the pronunciation is colonel Okay, so Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel, Brigadier, and then Major General. Basically, we have a whole type of, a whole load of different types of general there. So in the US military, uh, they often refer to the stars on the general, you know, the one star general, two star general, and all this kind of stuff. Um, whereas in the British military, we have Brigadier, Major General, Lieutenant General, General, and then apparently we have Field Marshal after that. So then we go to Marshal, Field Marshal. Uh, so Field Marshal will normally be commanding several armies, okay? Several armies, like a, a group of armies. And so the Head Field Marshal will be someone who's in charge of all the armed forces of a certain nation or even a group of nations um, sometimes uh, allied alliances can pass their commands over to uh, whoever's in charge of a specific operation for example for example we had old monty uh, also uh, full name bernard montgomery who was acting as the field marshal commanding officer of all allied forces during some of the later stages of world war ii so. All right, so there's your ranks. So we've gone through quite a lot of things now, and this video is getting quite long. So I'd like to say once again, if you found that interesting and helpful, please do drop me a comment down below and let me know what you want to learn about next, and we'll we'll get into it. Let's go for this. Um, thank you very much for watching, everybody. And this is the Professor Reach salute. And catch ya later. Why do I always whisper it these days? Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and catch you later. I used to do it in a cool way. Thank you very much for watching, everybody.
catch you later.